Hello, everyone. I'm Yi Fly. Today, I'm going to talk about attacks on shields and hills, the second wave of GPST attack. This is a joint work with Stephen Galbraith. In this talk, we will talk about firstly what's the what's this work about, and we have some. We will explain a few quick questions you may have in your mind, and finally, we'll go to our technical overview. And in this talk, we uh, firstly, we will talk about what is SID key change. As you may have already know, this has been broken, but here we just assume uh, it was secure in, this, in, in here. And next we will talk about what's GPSD attack. And we'll talk about the countermeasure proposed by SID type skin proposed by FUSA and Petit and Asia Group 2021. And we explain how, to, how, how we break it again. So firstly, we give a very brief intro for SIDH. And um, in SIDH, we have a prime as the following form, an elliptic curve, and it will form a group structure. And isogeny is a morphism between elliptic curves, and you can think of it as a fractional polynomial, and it's also a group of homomorphism. And this can be uniquely determined by the kernel and the image curve and up to isomorphism. And for a natural number n, that is now divisible by p. And we have a following proposition that is the n torsion subgroup, which collects uh, the elliptic point uh, n times equal to the point at infinity. And this torsion subgroup will isomorphic to Zn cross Zn which is a two-dimensional ring structure. And in SIDHK, as we mentioned before, we have a two-dimensional ring. So we say P and Q is the basis for the EA, E2A torsion subgroup. And Alice secret key is an integer in 2A, in length A. And her secret key is also a kernel uh, the generate by P2 plus SKQ2, uh, the kernel gener generate by this point. And Alice will use this point to generate her own isogeny and compute E8 and evaluation on P3 and Q3. And this will be her public key. And Bob here does the same. He will obtain a, a curve and two points here. And, in, and they exchange the public key here. Alice will compute uh, based on the public key provoked, uh, provided by Bob. Alice will compute the kernel P prime plus SKQ prime. Use this as the kernel and generate another isogeny phi A prime uh, to have another curve. If they be half honest, honestly, and these two curves will be isomorphic, and that's why they can obtain the, the same shared secret key. And in the GPSD adaptive attack, Bob will manipulate his points here. And, and then Alice will uh, compute the public key, the shared key, by, based on the public key provided by Bob. And in, all, in the modeling of the GPSD attack, Alice will tell Bob whether these two curves are isomorphic or not. And this captures the concept that after the handshake of the protocol, um, two parties will make a confirmation to see whether they are using the, the same shared secret. So Alice serves this function here. So Alice will be an oracle that take uh, two curves and two points, and let Bob know whether these two curves are isomorphic or not. And also do a simple well pairing check here. And we have an assumption is that at, in, in GPSD attack, is that when G1 and G2, the group order is far less than P, with an overwhelming chance, these two, uh, the image curves are isomorphic if and only if G1 is G2, they are identical. Based on the assumption, 
um, we can interpret the second equation here as the following way to see whether uh, these two kernels are identical. Uh, the kernel on the left hand side is the correct kernel computed by uh, by Alice if the public key is honestly generated. And the one on the right hand side is provided by Bob, P prime, Q prime. And in this attack, Bob will manipulate uh, P prime and Q prime, and Alice will tell the outputs. And Bob will use this information to extract the full secret key of Alice. So, firstly, in the attack, Bob honestly computes EB. P, Q, and EAB, and send them to Alice. And later, he replaces his public key PQ by P prime as B as P, and Q prime as Q plus A to the A minus one P. And Alice will return one if and only if uh, the lit LSB of SK is zero. The count, uh, we take an example here. We take um, A equals three, for instance. P, Q will be a basis for E to the A, A torsion subgroup. And we know, because we know they will form a two-dimensional ring structure, the A cross the A. So we can represent P as the following way, O, O, one, O, and O, and Q as O, 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 one. And this is the correct kernel will be computed by Alice if they if Bob behave honestly. And in GPSD attack to extract the first bit, Bob add 4p to the second second point here. We rewrite the, the kernel as the following way. We can see the former part will be identical to the previous one, to the correct kernel. And the later part is depends on uh, has a turn in terms of any secret key. This turn means four times P and times SK here, which means that if SK is zero, this turn, uh, if SK is even, this turn will vanish and these two kernel will identical. If SK is odd, then this turn will not vanish so that these two kernel will be different. So which means that if Alice return one, which means these two kernel are identical, which means that SK is even. If Alice returns zero, which means that these two kernels are different, which means that um, SK is odd. So in this way, we can get the LSB of the secret key. And the next step is to extract the next bit. Bob manip uh, Bob replaces the P by P prime and Q prime. Uh, he add he add negative SK zero P uh, to P to the second uh, to the to the P and add two P to the Q. We rewrite the form and rewrite again. And these two terms, SK zero and negative SK zero, they will cancel out. So we obtain the similar form here. The path here, the former part is identical to the correct kernel. And if SK1 is zero, which means that the kernel will be, these two kernel are identical. If SK, if the next bit is one, then these two kernels are different. So in this way, we can get the second LSB of SK1 here. And remark that one has to scale the coefficient in front of this point here to pass to pass the well pairing check because the well pairing of this public key is not the correct one. So they have to multiply by some coefficient in front of the point here. And because they multiply by the same, by the same coefficient ahead, and so the kernel gener generated by these two points are the same. So is this bad? Uh, this is uh, not good because, uh, but this can easily be preframed by using FO transform type method, which means that Bob always use an ephemeral secret key and reveal it to Alice. So in this way, 
But if a bug reveal the secret key to Alice, and then Alice can notice that uh, whether Bob played any trick be behind his public key. So in this way, this can be it is can prevent this adaptive attack, but resulting in having a static to ephemeral only crypto system. An alternative method is to use either ZK proof systems or multi -party, uh, multiple public key techniques called KSIDH method. But this result in the number of isogenic computation is non constant in lambda. It could be linear, it could be quadratic. And in actual crypt 2021, uh, Fusa and Petit, they give an interesting and interactive proof system for the correctness of the public key. The high level idea of the, the mechanic of their work is very simple. They use the commutativity of isogeny. In theory, we notice we know that these two final curves will be isomorphic. But actually, if both parties are using the Lua formula, these two curves will be the same and the evaluation will also be the same. So in this way, if Bob manipulates the point in the public key, then the final evaluation will not match because Bob changed his, uh, Bob changed the point he should, he gave to Alice. So when Alice evaluate the point, the, these two values are not supposed to match. So what did we do in our work? We noticed the flaw in the in the proof of the proof system in their paper. And based on this flaw, we derive a concrete attack. You can feel this as a variant of GPST attack that adaptively recover user secret key again. And the attack is as efficient and effective as the GPST attack. So here are some, a few quick questions you may have in your mind. The first one is, can Catstrick the crew attack apply to this skin? The answer is yes, but not in polynomial time theoretically by the current version of their, their attack. Because in this paper, they use, in that paper, they use unknown endomorphism ring in their construction. And how about the rubber passive attack? The answer is yes, and in polynomial time theoretically. So what's the savage value of this attack uh, after these two attacks present? Um, the end, my answer is no practical value, only theoretical value. We give a new attack in a weaker security model and break the crypto system adaptively. So uh, finally, we can talk about our technical overview. Uh, this is the, the diagram of the, their, their crypto system. They have public encryption, they have a uh, key change, but the fundamental idea is this diagram here. The left-hand side here is just as the same, uh, quite similar to, um, to the uh, SIDH key change. And the key validation mechanism they present here <clears throat> is the they use the idea of the commutativity of the of isogeny. They are the use they want to use this technique to prevent to prove the correctness of the public key and prevent the adaptive attack. In our work, we will use this mechanism to recover at least secret key. So um, the modeling, uh, in our modeling, uh, we say Bob is the bad guy again, and Alice is the victim of our attack. We say Alice is an oracle on input of one curve. We just ignore the last curve with, together with four points. It will return one if and only if the following three equation will hold. And yeah, and, you, if, uh, and these two, there are pairing equation here and the kernel equation here. If you ignore the first, uh, the middle two equations here, and this will be the original SID key change. And these two additional equations is about the key validation mechanism they proposed. And colors in blue means that 
uh, uh, means those stuff Bob can manipulate. And those in red means the secret key of Alice, including WX, Y, Z, and, S, the secret, and also the main secret key here. And in our attack, we only manipulate the two points, RA and SA, in our attack. This is sufficient for us to give a, an adaptive attack. So in this talk, we will just call this as the pairing equation and the kernel equation and the uh, equation one and equation two. Uh, firstly, we start from some a few lemmata. The first one is R8 and SA. When you, uh, if Bob generate honestly, these two points are uh, basis for the 2 to the 2A torsion subgroup. And recall that uh, the first equation and the second equation is the following form. And we can after we can conclude that they have some spatial relationship with at least secret key, which is that W plus SK Y equal X plus SK Z equals zero. And notice that WXY Z Z is of length two A and SK is just, just of length A in, in their in their setting. It's a bit different from the formal SIDH. But so in other words, the information of SK is hidden in the lower bits of WXYZ. So we will use this um, information to extract at least secret key. So firstly, we also start from the first bit. We can rewrite the first equation and the second equation in the matrix way. It is phi a, um, phi a, uh, phi a of R A R S A, the W X Y Z of R A B S of S A B, in the matrix way. The goal of the technique in our attack is, firstly, we find spatial matrices P one and P two, such that P one equal, uh, P one of the matrix equal the matrix of P two. We call this commutativity in this talk. And the commutativity holds conditioned on the parity of WXYZ. We also require the determinant of P1 equal to one. Uh, this is for the pairing equation. If we find such a pair, we invoke Oracle by using following, uh, by using the, this forge RA prime, SA prime, RAB prime, SAB prime as the following way. It return one, at least will return one if and only if the commutativity conditions hold. This is because you can just imagine if you apply P1 on the left hand side here, and then you will have also have P1 here. And if commutativity hold, you will have this matrix of P2 of this factor here. So that's why if commutativity holds, Alice will return one. If I only Alice returns one. The matrix we take is fairly simple. It is uh, P2 is just the identity matrix, and P1 is identity matrix, adding 2 to the 2 a minus 1. The commutativity holds if and only if Wx equal to 0 module 2. Recall that we have the, this relation here. And we can also prove that by some uh, by using some elliptical properties, y and z cannot be both even. And the commutativity holds if and only if sk is zero. So the first bit of sk is zero if and only if Alice or say the oracle returns one. So in this way, we can extract the first bit of Alice secret key. So next, how to recover the next bit? Based on the relation we have, we can rewrite W as the negative A Y. Uh, but notice that this, this is module 2A. So we need to add some higher terms here. We represent, uh, represent the equation as the following way. And we assign R A prime as the following form to Alice, 
and the first equation will be satisfied if and only if the next bit is zero. And because we did all we, we didn't change as a so the second equation will always hold. And the kernel equation will always will also hold. But unfortunately, the pairing equation will not hold here. And in GPS ticket attack, we mentioned that they use some uh, scaling method uh, to apply a coefficient uh, before before the pair uh, the points here. But unfortunately, if we do that here, uh, the second equation will not hold because you you have some coefficient in front of them. And if you have some coefficient in front of R A prime here. The first equation will also not hold, and this captures the the high level idea how this how the normal GPS D attack will not apply to the crypto system. Yeah. So the oracle taking this input will always re return zero, and we obtain no information of any secret key. So how to solve this problem? In the previous page. We represent the first row in terms of the second row. So conversely, we can represent the second row in terms of the first row. And in this case, we just we firstly assume SK is invertible. So we can write we can write y as s uh, negative SK inverse W plus some higher terms here. And so it's so we did the same for Z, Z. And we re we use use the same idea in as the first as the previous page, and we write uh, we replace S A as this way. And the second at uh, the first equation will hold if and only if next B is zero. And the second equation hold condition on the inverse the but the next bit of the inverse of the Alice secret key. And the pairing equation will, will also hold, and the kernel equation will also hold. So in this case, we can if so if SK is even, uh, SK is odd, or say it is invertible, we can use this te technique to fully recover Alice's secret key. So we just need to consider what if SK is even. The case SK is even and it is not invertible. The idea here is quite sim uh, quite similar before. We reuse the P1, P2 commutativity method. And we keep extracting the next B until one appear. So we assign um, RA prime SA prime as the following way. And the second, the first equation will always hold. And the second equation holds condition on the next bit. And with the pairing and the kernel equation, they both hold. So one can recursively use this approach to extract the maximal power of two in every secret key. So once uh, one appear, we cannot extract the next bit. Well, we, we cannot extract the next bit by using this method. So to extract the next bit when SK is even, Say we use the previous technique, we extract the maximal power of two divided in SK, and we already extract ILSB of SK, we denote it by SKL. We make inquiry to Alice as the following way, and the high level idea is that we, because SK is not invertible, so we just remove those, we just remove those uh, power of two factor in SKA and do the same technique as the make as the previous method. So here SK delta means the inverse of SK, SKL and define the maximal uh, power of two factor, the infer the inverse of this stuff. And pairing and kernel equation will will hold, and you return y if and only if the next bit is zero. So uh, this is the form, uh, this is our attack, how to extract Alice's secret key when her public key is as the, uh, the 2 to the 2A, 2 to the 2A version. 
It will also generate generalize this attack to any smaller price and uh, with, with any small price and a more general form of the private key. So in this paper, we pre present a new adaptive attack against SID type skins using commutative key isogeny to, to prevent the adaptive attack. And the adaptive attack is run as efficient as before in polynomial time as, yeah, as effective as GPSD attack. And we are here was also provide some open problems for you, but might not be very relevant to this talk. The first one is that, is it possible to have an efficient variant of SIDH that is secure against Castric, the crew, and also Robert's attack? Uh, recently, there's some um, a masking technique uh, proposed in Eprint, proposed on Eprint, and whether they are secure or not, it requires further research to investigate. And if so, if we have this variant, can we have an efficient proof system to prevent the adaptive attack? Because obviously, if you read those papers carefully, they are still suffer from some adapt they have some variant of adaptive attack. So this is our talk. Uh, thanks for your listening. And if you like, see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>